Crew AI new version released. And this update is coming straight from the Discord channel of the Crew AI team by the founder, by the founder Joao. If you're not following uh, their Discord, I highly recommend checking this out. And basically the announcement was the fact that a new version was released, 0.22.5. And this video, I'm going to share with you the slight adjustments that the team made with regards to the project structure. Um, obviously, they mentioned that the bugs were fixed and they discussed the amount of traction that Crew AI is gaining and definitely uh, amazing traction. I, as you guys probably know, if you've been following the channel, I love the Crew AI project and um, the Crew AI project is one of the, my top most favorite uh, projects. I usually talk about Open Interpreter and Autogen and Crew AI, as you probably know. Anyway, I haven't uploaded the videos in the last few days because um, I kind of felt like the agentic space, um, while it is very exciting and, and has a lot of potential, I still don't feel how it can become relevant uh, for me in many cases in the production level so i've been kind of trying to figure out ways how i can use agents in the last few days i haven't come up with really interesting use cases so i didn't upload any videos about this but uh, since uh, Crew AI came out with a significant update i thought that i will share this with you because they did change the project structure and i think it is very useful to stay updated with regards to what's going on in this project. So with regards to the installation of Crew AI, it's pretty straightforward. You can open a Conda environment if you'd like. Let me increase the size. So Conda create, all the usual stuff. By the way, I found this um, interesting snipping tool. Not snipping tool, it's like a tool that saves your snippets, um, kind of responses. It's free on Windows, and I don't know if they have a Mac version, but I've been loving it so far. So basically what you can do is called, what's the name of it? A text, let me see. A text, yes, A text. This is off topic, but it's important. So A text, and what it allows you to do, it allows you to save many different uh, responses or lines of code, or stuff that you usually uh, use very often. And then let's say I, I want to open a new Conda environment. So I can just write this Conda Autogen and it's automatically going to um, populate this test, this text for me. Uh, probably it won't work now because you know how it goes during the video, uh, during the recording and the streaming stuff never works out, but let's see, Conda Autogen. Yes, it did work amazingly. So this is just an example, but I wanted to share with you because it's a, a very powerful tool, at least for me, and it allows me to um, create new environments very easily. This is just a code snippet for creating the Autogen Studio. Anyway, back to the topic of the video. So you hit the contact create, pp install crew AI, and the next step, um, what you can do, this is new, you can just via the command line you create can create a new project so crew ai create and then project name um, and then i did this in the conda environment the next step would be entering visual studio you just type code and it will automatically open your visual studio and what you can do next you basically have this structure of the project i hope you can see this let me close all of this so what you can do you go to the readme and basically follow the instructions it is very clear and very easy to follow so install poetry then poetry lock then poetry install then you add the api key to the env file over here and then you can start modifying um, the files to create your crew and lastly you 
run this in the command line poetry run and the project name now let's cover the new files as you can see the organization the structure of the folder is kind of different so we have the config files so with the config files we have all the agents the crew so i have the research agent his role his goal and his backstory and i have the reporting analysis anal analyst sorry his role his goal and the backstory and we have the task so research task and the description what is the expected output the re reporting task the description what is the expected output and that's pretty much it you don't have to change uh, other things i guess you need you only need to um, make sure that if you want to add any tool or stuff like this you don't need to add the tools over here let's see and if you have any if you want to have any placeholders like variables changing variables you can also add them over here but that is pretty much pretty much it and once you want to run the crew you can just go to uh, the terminal and run the crew so in this specific instance what i did i kind of uh, used the current example that they provide in the boilerplate in the boilerplate this is basically a boilerplate you just type in um, the creation of the project and it creates the boilerplate for you but what i wanted to do is um, you see if i can leverage uh, core ai in order to study a field that i have a lot of interest in uh, for many years but in the last few months i've been thinking a lot about risk management and risk taking uh, leveraging time um, leveraging capital so since i want to improve my ability to take risk i'm also thinking of starting a new series in my youtube channel in which i interview people who are risk takers and this shouldn't be confused with risk managers because there is one thing to know the theory of risk management but it's another thing to be a risk taker so anyway i wanted to leverage to test the core ai and also to leverage um, the ability to see if i can learn about risk taking via the crew so i created this agents the research agent which is a probability and risk-taking researcher the goal is to uncover fundamental principles such as the kelly criterion and unconventional wisdom about risk-taking the backstory you're a seasoned research researcher with a knack for uncovering theories about risk-taking known for your ability to find the most relevant information and present it in a clear and concise manner you look at risk-taking from different perspectives day traders, commanders, insurance companies, VCs, etc. And we have the reporting analyst, which is a risk-taking data-driven coach. His goal is to create detailed practices based about based on risk-taking. And I asked it to base everything on research finding. And the backstory is you're a PhD in statistics and philosophy of science with a keen eye for detail. You're known for your ability to turn complex data into clear and concise ideas, making it easy for others to understand and act on the information you provide. You love critical thinking. And over here we have the task. Conduct a thorough research about risk taking. Make sure you find any interesting and relevant information. The expected output is a list with 10 bullet points of the most fundamental principles of risk taking. And the list should be uh, diverse with examples of risk taking from various walks of life. And then we have the reporting task in which I asked it to review the context you got and expand each topic into a full section of a report. Make sure the report is detailed and contains any and all relevant information. And the expected output is a fully fledged report with the main topics, each with a full section of information. Uh, yes, so this is pretty basic, but the video is mostly for showing you the new uh, core AI structure. I mean, the architecture of the folder and how they are going, how core AI projects are going to build, be built from now on. Now let me show you the result. So let's go down. I'm not sure if it's 
not so readable since it's tiny but over here we can see some of the response so yeah if you know Kuro AI you know it's pretty straightforward with regards to the fact that it usually delivers what you're asking it to deliver by the way I'm using GPT-4 for this so let's see what's the final answer so risk management in day trading day traders often use statistical trends gathered from trading activity such as price movement and volume to manage the risk effectively utilization of the Kelly criterion in daily in day trading this mathematical model is used to determine the optimal size of series of bets thereby managing risk um, then calculated risk taking false protection risk assessment risk pooling this is something that is from the insurance industry etc um, then we have the next task which is the researcher not the researcher um, the coach which is supposed to spit out a, a summary as you can see here he kind of expanded a bit of what the researcher produced so risk management in day trading utilization of the Kelly criterion in day trading calculated risk taking in command operations principles of force protection in command operations risk assessment in the insurance uh, industry risk pooling in the insurance industry and diversification in venture capital due diligence in venture capital and balance between risk and reward and empirical research and theoretical models um, all of these are very interesting to me uh, because I want again I want to expand my knowledge with regards to risk taking before we finish up let me just share with you uh, let's learn together what is the Kelly criterion because I believe this is a this is something important what is the Kelly explain the Kelly criterion in the context of investing give an example for Great. Now let's see. The Kelly criterion is a formula used to decide how much money to bet or invest in order to maximize your money over time. Imagine you have a magic coin that you know will land on heads 60% of the time and tails 40% of the time. If someone offers to let you bet money on guessing heads correctly, you'd want to bet more because you know you have a good chance of being right. But you also want to uh, wouldn't want to bet all your money in case you're wrong sometimes the Kelly criterion helps you figure out exactly how much of your money to bet to make the most money over many bests without running out of money too soon let's use a simple example fit for a sixth grader imagine you have 10 bucks in your piggy bank you're playing a game where you can guess the number on a dice that has six sides if you guess right you get double the money you bet but if you guess wrong you lose the money you bet you have a magic trick to know what the number three uh, to know that the number three comes up 50 percent of the time even though in a, re in a real game each number has the same chance the kelly criterion can help you decide how much of your 10 bucks you should bet each time you play to make sure you end up with the money with most money after playing many times according to the kelly criterion you calculate the best amount to bet based on your advantage, in this case, the magic trick. Since you know three comes up 50% of the time, you have a big advantage over the normal chance of 16%. Uh, the formula tells you to bet a portion of your money that matches your edge or advantage in the game. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see, can you explain the actual formula? So here is the formula. F is the fraction of your current bankroll to wager. B is the net odds received on the bet, the amount one per unit staked minus one. P is the probability of winning. Q is the probability of losing. B, P is the product of the odds and probability of winning. Q is simply the probability of losing. Let's break it down with an example. 
Okay, suppose you have an opportunity to bet on a coin flip where you know the coin is biased to land on heads. Okay. And on tails, 40% of the time, probability of losing is 0.40. If you win the bet, you double your money. Net odds received is 1. Plugging the value, these values into the Kelly criterion formula, 20%. This means you should bet 20% of your bankroll on each coin flip to maximize your bankroll growth over time. By following the strategy, you're taking advantage of the biased coin in a way that balances the potential for growth with the risk of losing money. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm not sure if this if you find this interesting or not, but this is something that I find interesting. So I'm un operating under the assumption that anything that I find interesting, you might also find interesting. And in worst case, if you don't find interest it interesting, you can let me know or s skip the video. Anyway, uh, that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please. Um, like and subscribe obviously leave a comment below if you have any feedback for improvement any ideas any interesting projects that you think that uh, i should um, check out always happy to hear feedback always happy to communicate with you guys um, that's it for today and until next time keep on automating